we'll uh, we'll get it out to you. So thanks, and see you after that. Bye. For the best and latest podcasts available anywhere, go to the podcast app on your cell phone and type in GSMC to access free content-rich podcasts on health and wellness, book reviews, sports, entertainment, relationships, social media, movies, technology, finance, and even weird news. Subscribe and download the GSMC Podcast Network's family of shows, available everywhere podcasts are found. All right, we are back here on the GSMC Baseball Podcast, bringing you our fourth and final segment, which is going to be about some general news stories around the league that I did want to touch upon. As I stated before, there are a good amount of stories happening for kind of just a random Friday. So I I did want to talk about these, and I'm really excited to, uh, to touch upon them. So, yeah, here we go. So the first thing is Yuri Perez starting off some negative news. He has shoulder inflammation and will start the season on the IL for the Marlins. Now, this is good and bad news. The bad news is he started the season on the IL, and it's shoulder inflammation. Obviously, you don't want to see your star pitcher ever get hurt like that, especially a young guy like that. You never want to see that. The good news, he doesn't need surgery. That's the recommendation is right now from whatever doctor he did see, that he will not need surgery as of right now, just rex and relaxation for that arm, which I think he can do. So it's very positive that it's not Tommy John or something serious like that. But I want I do want to be clear and say that just because it is shoulder inflammation and that he doesn't need surgery right now doesn't mean he won't need it in the future. I think an injury like this, especially for a younger guy, could potentially sneak up on him and affect him a lot into his future. I don't think the doors close on him having a setback in his process and needing a surgery after. So I think that's really just neat what the Marlins need to avoid right now. Yuri is such a big part of this team for this year and the future, and you have to be extra cautious with him always because he is a face to your franchise and a guy that is really, really good. So that's the positive news that it's only shoulder inflammation. The negative news, it could get a lot worse always. I mean, I guess that's kind of the same thing for every injury, so not much to uh, to comment on that. But And also, he is starting the season on the IL, but it could have been a lot worse. You're hoping it doesn't get worse, and you're hoping he doesn't have a setback. So that's all you can really ask for with the Marlins and... That's really all you can hope for with Yuri Perez and his future. So we'll be monitoring that story a lot, and we'll be giving you updates on it as the season does go on. Next, we have the Guardians. They waived starting center fielder Miles Straw. Straw came over in a trade with the with the Astros a few years ago and did his Miles Straw thing, which is play great defense and not hit at all. This He kind of became a cold tier on that way, never hitting home runs ever. Hit a home run in first time in like 600 at bats or something crazy like that against Tampa last year which was crazy so Straw plays great defense but cannot hit a lick only had a few years left in this contract and I think it was only one or two but essentially he got from the Astros a few years ago after being traded so yeah I it's not a surprise they waived him because I think fans patience was him with him was getting thin he was a fun guy, a great guy in the clubhouse, a great just dude in general who played great defense and d- does bring some value to this team, but he just didn't hit at all. He was very, very frustrating for the fans to watch because he was always the nine guy, always killing down rallies. So I think in the end, his time was over with the Guardians, and he knew it. So not a surprise that they cut him. I think he'll get claimed pretty easily. I think some team will want his defensive versatility and how well he does play defense for later inning things. So I think he'll land on his feet. But not that surprising they cut him. He was a starter for a little while, so I guess it's surprising in that way. But still, uh, Trevor Gott is having Tommy John surgery for the A's and will be out, obviously, all of this year. Gott was a signing by the A's that I, I liked a lot. I think he showed a lot of promise for the Mets last year in bullpen roles, kind of towards the end. He has, he has great stuff. But his windup's really funky, and I think that contributed to him getting Tommy John. I think there's a lot of potential with him there. I think there's a lot of hidden talent, but overall, he's not, of course, an amazing reliever. So I don't think this is a huge blow to the A's, who didn't have much going for him anyways. Obviously, you would have liked for him to stay healthy because he is. he was going to be a big part of your bullpen. 
I think he could have been a guy that could could have closed out some games for him. Him and Mason Miller kind of being in the back end of that bullpen, potentially gotten a nice reliever at the deadline for him. But obviously that's not going to happen now with him getting Tommy John, with him being out for the year. So really unfortunate for the A's, but I don't think the season was going to go right anyways, and I don't think a Trevor God injury is going to stop that. The D-backs released Elvis Andrews. He was signed to a minor league deal. I, I liked it originally. I thought it was good mentorship for the young guys they have in their roster who play shortstop. Obviously, he was a great shortstop in his prime, was one of the better ones in the league with Texas. Has not done great in the later parts of his career, flopping around from teams, getting traded to the A's, signing with the White Sox, getting released from the White Sox, now going to the Diamondbacks. So hasn't really lived up in the end of his career with what he once was, but I saw, still thought it was a good depth signing for them. Obviously, they released him. They don't need him anymore, but I think he probably laid some good wisdom upon their young shortstops, Geraldo Perdomo, Jordan Lowler. So I think overall it was a nice move by the Diamondbacks to bring him in. I don't think he ever had a chance to make the opening day roster, but overall it was a nice move by them, and not a surprise they released him, but I think it was a good move anyways. Casey Mize and Reese Olsen won rotation spots for the Tigers, beating out Matt Manning. Really nice job for, by Casey Mize and Reese Olsen. I think both these guys have a lot of potential being younger guys, especially Casey Mize being such a prolific prospect, being such a high draft pick, being a guy that really has not had a great start to his career. It's really nice to see him blend back at his feet, win a rotation spot with the Tigers, and be a big part of the team this year, which I think could be really good. I think they have a lot of good pitchers in that rotation, like Tarek Skubal, like Jack Flaherty, who they signed. I think there's some other young guys who can make potential as well. So really excited for Casey Myers to make the rotation, see what he can do off of injury in his first full year. Really excited for Reese Olsen. I think he has a lot of potential. So overall, I think both these guys are going to be very valuable to the Tigers and very valuable to the team. And I think it was a nice job for them to win rotation spots. Nice job for them to see that they still have a future on this team. And really excited to watch them with the Tigers and see what does end up happening with them. See how they do, do perform this season. The Giants released Amir Garrett. Not too notable here, but a nice lefty reliever I think could benefit some teams on a minor league contract. A guy who brings a lot of heart to the team. Is really valuable in that way. I think has, some, has a nice fastball as well. Has a nice slider. Could potentially get something out of him if you do put him in the right role. So a nice a nice step move for any team that signs him. Not a huge thing, but still someone I did want to touch upon as he did get released, and I thought it was notable. After that, we have Eduardo Rodriguez. I talked about him leaving his opening his tra string training start early because of injury. It has now been confirmed that he has a left latch strain and will start the season on the injured list. That was some news that broke right before I went on air, so did want to talk about that. This, in my opinion, is a big blow to the Diamondbacks. I love the Eduardo Rodriguez signing for the Diamondbacks. I thought he was the perfect number three to that team, and I thought he was a guy that balanced out the rotation really well. Him, Zach Gallen, Merrill Kelly, Brandon Fott, I think that was a great top four there, and I think it was really, really nice. It's unfortunate that he is starting the season on the IL. Obviously, I think they would have liked him to not start the season on the IL. I think it would have been great for him to be a big part of the rotation going into the year, be what they paid him. But as long as he's okay, and as long as he's okay in the long run for the Diamondbacks playoff run, I think they'll be okay. I I don't think it should be a big big uh, a big deal long term thing. So that's really all you have to all I have to hope for if you are a Diamondbacks fan. This not being a huge deal, and this being kind of a a bump in the road for him. A left latch strain isn't the worst thing to happen. It's not a shoulder injury. It's not an elbow. It's not an arm in general. So that's a positive always with injuries. So that's all you can really ask for if you are a Diamondbacks fan with the injury. So I think we better. I think it'll be a great team for this Diamondbacks, a great player for this Diamondbacks team, a great fit, and I'm really excited to watch him when he does get healthy. I think this isn't a great start to the year. It's a, it is a blow in my opinion, but a lot of worse things could have happened, and I think overall it will be fine. The Blue Jays, they released Eduardo Escobar. Escobar brought some nice infield depth to this team with the third base position kind of being in flux. I think it's now pretty clear that it is going to be to Isaiah Connor falefa who will be starting, so I don't think Escobar had a spot on this team. I think he could potentially re-sign with them on a minor league contract, just bringing some more infield depth, which I do think they need. Always need some more depth, and I think Escobar is a guy who brings a lot of depth to this team, brings a lot of depth to any team he's on, even though he might not hit amazing. He is a guy that is very reliable, 
and can fill in at some spot starts. And it is a very streaky hitter, so if you get him at the right time, I think could be an impactful guy. But other than that, I think I see him landing on his feet. I think he could land on a minor league deal somewhere else in on on a team. I think that is a strong possibility. I think he does have a lot of value to a team still. And overall, I am excited to see where he ends up. As a Mets fan, I always have a special place in my heart for Escobar. He had a really nice, he had a really nice September with us, getting us in that in the playoffs when it was kind of in doubt when our team was struggling a little bit. Obviously, it didn't end up mattering because we lost to the Padres, but still always have a special place in my heart for him. I still think he's valuable, valuable depth to this team, to any team that signed him, and I think he just is good rotation, good good infield depth. Yuki Matsui is apparently commenting in my. Uh, my live stream. Hello, Yuki. I don't think you're the real Yuki Matsui. It'd be pretty cool if you were, but so hello. Thank you for commenting. Always appreciated. The show is coming to an end, so if you do have any questions before I do end, please let me know. Finally, the Nationals also broke before this. They are releasing Zach Davies. Not a real surprise here. Davies is a guy that's trying to been trying to hold on in the MLB after his release from the Diamondbacks. Was a starter there for a few years, but with them... With them improving and them improving in the rotation department specifically, I don't think Davies had a spot in this team. There's also some personal things as well with his wife that happened a few years ago. I don't think any teams really want to take some, take a flyer on that when he might have some personal issues off the field, some off-field stuff. So I think the writing on the, was on the wall for him. I don't think he was making the roster anyways. Uh, YouTube commenter asked, Would you trust an interpreter with your with your bank account worth $4.5 million? Um, I want. I think I know what that's referencing. Um, I don't know if, enough about the situation personally to comment on what what's happening with Otani and Interpreter. I think it's unfortunate that their friendship is gone because that was something really nice to watch over the years. But I don't know enough about the situation, unfortunately, to really comment on it enough. I think it's more of a legal situation than a baseball situation. I think overall, if I had to give a guess on what happened with Otani in that situation, I think... Ipe had a gambling problem. I think he, at, with illegal gambling rings, I think he asked his good buddy Otani to pay it off. Otani did. His, he then told his lawyers, which then they told him, hey, show, hey, you can't pay off an illegal gambling debt. That's a crime. And tried doing PR control. So I think that's really what happened here. But again, uh, I don't know enough about the situation to really give a full thing. But if I had to guess, I think that is what is go- that is what happened. And we'll we'll see what happened more with, with the... With the situation going forward, it's going to be a big news, believe me. But going back to Zach Davies, I think it's not a surprise that he got released. Even with the Nationals pitching staff where it is, I don't think it, he really had a spot in there. So overall, not a, not a big surprise here to see him get released. So that is the show for today. If you have one more question, uh, Yuki, please let me know. But other than that, that is the show for today. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to follow us anywhere you can get content and updates. Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, all that stuff. Just anywhere you can get updates. Happy Friday. Tuesday, I will be having a special guest on, which is Eric from the Wrestling Podcast. We're going to talk some baseball. So I'm really excited about that. So we'll definitely talk there. So thank you so much for watching. Apparently, Yuki in the comments has one more last question. So the question is, better record in 2024, Yankees or Mets? I'm a Mets fan, but it's going to be the Yankees. I think the Yankees have a pretty incredible team, even with Garrett Cole being hurt. I think the Soto addition was huge, and I think it's going to make them such a much better team. I'm very high on them. I think they are a top three team in the AL pretty easily. I don't have the Mets making the playoffs right now. So I would say the Yankees are definitely going to have a better record than the Mets, as much as it does hurt me to say as a Mets fan. But that is that is what I would say there, and I, I, I don't think it's going to be close as well. I think the Yankees are going to be a high 90s team, and I think the Mets are going to be a mid-80s team. So if I, if I had to guess there, so... Thank you so much for watching the show today, guys. Thanks so much for commenting, liking. Remember to subscribe, hit the notification bell. Helps the content a lot. Helps so much. So thank you so much for watching. It is always appreciated. And happy Friday. See you on Monday. And have a great week. And we'll see what baseball throws at us tomorrow. Bye. Let's go. I wake up to a little bit of drool on my pillow, feel like it's gonna be a bad day Yeah, I'm tired of shit, and the coffee ain't hit yet, damn ain't that great I don't wanna go